Hello and welcome to another CryptoNation video tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be setting up OpenSSH and NX Server on Zubuntu. This will allow you to use SSH, SFTP, and remote desktop securely into your machine. If you like these video tutorials, please consider following us on Twitter at CryptoNation or subscribing to us on YouTube.com slash CryptNode for future updates. Let's begin by installing OpenSSH as it's a requirement of NX Server. Open a terminal window and type in sudo apt-get install openssh-server openssh-client, then press enter and type in your password when prompted. Now that we have OpenSSH installed, let's look at the configuration file. In the terminal window, type in sudo leafpad slash etc slash ssh slash sshd underscore config and press enter. You can customize certain options for OpenSSH via this file, including the port the server listens on. If you make any changes, such as the server port, make sure to restart OpenSSH in the terminal by typing sudo slash etc slash init period d slash ssh restart then press enter. Now that we have OpenSSH installed, let's install the required components for NX Server. Open a browser and go to www.nomachine.com and click on download. Click on NX Free Edition for Linux. Click on the Linux DEB or Debian version. Download the client, node, and server DEB files. Scroll down to the installation instructions. In a terminal window, navigate to where you downloaded the files. Type in the first command to install NX client. Type in the second command to install NX node. Type in the third command to install NX server. We need to make a change to the NX node configuration to allow creating a XFCE4 session. In the terminal, type in sudo leafpad slash usr slash nx slash etc slash node dot cfg and press enter. Please note, nx must be uppercase in the previous command. Scroll down to the bottom of the file. Copy the command start gnome line and comment out the backup. In the copied line, remove the gnome dash session string and type in slash usr slash bin slash start xfce4. When done, save and close the file. Let's test OpenSSH on the local machine. In a terminal window, type in ssh the local username at localhost and press enter. When prompted to add the machine's fingerprint, type yes and press enter. When prompted for a password, type in the local user account password and press enter. If you're unable to connect, don't panic. You may need to restart OpenSSH, check the port configuration, or reinstall OpenSSH. With OpenSSH and NX server set up, I've now switched to my desktop machine. I've already installed OpenSSH and NX Client, so it's ready to connect to a remote machine running NX Server. Let's test OpenSSH and verify that we can connect to the remote machine. Open a terminal window and type in SSH, the remote username, at the remote machine address and press Enter. When prompted to add the machine's fingerprint, type Yes and press Enter. When prompted for a password, type in the remote user account password and press enter. Now that we're connected, we can navigate directories on the remote machine from the terminal. When done, close the terminal window. Go to Applications, Internet, NX Client for Linux, and open the NX Client. Please note, to set up additional connections, you will need to use the NX Connection Wizard. Because we have no connection set up, the NX Connection Wizard is automatically launched. Once it opens, click Next. 
enter the session name, the host address, the host port, and select the connection type. When ready, click Next. We need to change the X desktop from KDE to GNOME and select a desktop size. Please note, GNOME will not be launched. Due to our change in the NX node configuration, XFCE4 will be used. Click Next when done. Finally, click Finish and the NX client will open. Enter the remote user's name, the remote user's password, and click Login. When prompted, click Yes to add the machine's fingerprint. It may take a moment to connect and display the remote machine's desktop, depending on the speed of the connection and how powerful the remote machine is. Please note, due to the height of the remote session screen being taller than the local screen, the bottom menu bar is not displayed. In this instance, to correct the issue, make the remote session full screen, the bottom menu bar will display, and then the remote session size can be put back to normal. If you use a smaller remote session size, the bottom menu bar will automatically display as it should. Some applications, such as the Synaptic Package Manager, will not start using their default launcher. However, this can be corrected. Go to Applications, System, then click and drag Synaptic to the desktop. Try launching Synaptic, entering your password when prompted. As you can see, Synaptic did not launch. Right-click on the Synaptic icon and click Properties. Go to the Launcher tab and in the Command field enter gksudo with a space at the end and click Close. Try launching Synaptic again, entering your password when prompted. This time Synaptic will launch and you can use it to manage packages. When done, click the Close button on the Remote Session window. When prompted, choose if you want to disconnect but keep the session alive for future connections, terminate the session, or cancel. If you want to copy files between the machines over SSH, you can use SCP, aka Secure Copy, or if you want a GUI, you can use an FTP client such as FileZilla and use SFTP. Go to Applications, Internet, and open FileZilla. When FileZilla opens, click the Site Manager icon. Click New Site and give it a name. Enter the remote address, remote port, and change the server type to SFTP. Then change the login type to normal, enter the remote username and password, then click Connect. When prompted, click OK to add the machine's fingerprint. After FileZilla connects, you can navigate both remote and local machines and transfer files. Thank you for watching this video tutorial, I hope you found it useful.